Mary Daly, before we start talking about the impact of the war, could we just maybe discuss a little bit the situation, the social and economic situation of Ireland on the eve of the war, and obviously reflect that uh, there wasn't uh, one experience for Ireland. Dublin was very different from Belfast, and both were very different from rural Ireland. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, let's let's start with the cities. I mean, Belfast was really booming uh, in 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 this period. I mean, we all know about the Titanic, but. But shipbuilding was shipbuilding is something that goes in cycles. But shipbuilding was really on the up at that stage, and Belfast uh, was, was a very prosperous, very self-confident city. I mean, all you have to do is look at City Hall, and you can see. This, I mean, the scale of the place is extraordinary, and it, it does spell out. This is a very, very proud and very prosperous city. Dublin, kind of a rather different story. I mean, Dublin has had the 1913 lockout, uh, which has done a lot of uh, of damage to the city in, in multiple ways. It's had the big housing inquiry as well, which takes place uh, in, just in the run up to the Great War. And in fact, the report the report comes out, as it come out, comes out shortly before the war breaks out. And that report, it, it really spells out a horrifying position uh, with, with regard to not just housing but really broad living conditions in the city because it includes doc uh, material on, on income levels and a uh, and it really shows that there's 20 I mean there's 20,000 families who are living in one room units now some of them are only one and two two person families some of them are six and eight person households and I mean the mortality rate in the city was reckoned to be the fifth highest in the known world at the time now that's probably an exaggeration but it was really really horrific and there was a lot of unemployment, there was a lot of poverty. And then furthermore, I think it's important to note that that report really indicted Dublin Corporation. It spelled out the fact that a number of councillors were tenement owners. And in general, there was, there was a kind of a big, ex, a, a big uh, investigation into uh, the crisis in Dublin and the beginnings of plans for a re housing reform and for, I mean, they'd built a lot of houses, but the problem, they'd built more houses pr proportionately than any other city in the UK. But the problem was absolutely monumental. They needed about, uh, they'd built about 3,000, they needed to build about 30,000 urgently. Really, really serious housing crisis. Uh, in rural Ireland, uh, I think the main thing to note is a land ownership. By 1914, three quarters of Irish farmers were in the process of buying their farms. They had gone through the various land acts. They had a, a long-term mortgage, which would have been less than the rent they had been paying. And they have effectively got the keys to the farm and they have ownership of it. They are secure in that respect. Uh, the other quarter haven't, but they're expecting to get it because there's a compulsory purchase in the, west, in the congested districts of the west of Ireland. And the general feeling is that the other landlords will, you know, it'll only take time. Some of them left still waiting to buy where they really, you know, not an inch, no surrender type of landlords. Some others were estates that were in some kind of complex positions. But there's also in rural Ireland, there's a large farm labourer population who would like to be farmers as well, and they're not going to become farmers. So they're, they're, they're a group that wouldn't necessarily be happy with their lives, but their aspiration, and there's a lot of evidence of that, is that, you know, someday I will, I too will become a farmer. That's what they wished for, but there wasn't enough land to go around. So the circumstances are mixed. Em emigration is always there. It's it's not that high at this stage. It would have been much higher in the 80s and in the 90s. It's 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 still there, but it's ticking over. But it's you know it's down. So mixed circumstances. Looking forward to home rule. Uh, a belief that this will magically change certain things. Old age pensions. Bear in mind have come in. Uh, you know about what about five six years earlier, and that really would have changed life. Quite, quite a bit for a lot of a lot of small households, particularly rural households. There's actually cash coming in every week. It's not a lot, but these are houses that wouldn't have had cash coming in every every week ever before. So we all know, of course, home rule was uh, postponed because of the outbreak of the First World War. But that's not the only thing that's put on hold. Uh, as you mentioned, the the housing inquiry, all of that work was put on hold, and the, the and, whole and, issue of, and, of votes and for la women. land purchase was mm. also put on hold, and also the congested districts board, which I hadn't mentioned, uh, which was really, you know, had been working from the 1890s and had increasingly focused on the fact that really the only way to help these people, they tried developing fishing industry, 
batteries and so on like that. And they were all fine, but they were only supplementary. And they reckoned what they needed to do was a lot more of buying out grazier land, as they call it, a big tracts of land where there were just cattle and a herd to mind them and dividing them and creating property. They were working at 20 something acre plots and migrating people from, you know, much more congested areas in, in Mayo Galway to less congested areas in Mayo Galway and Roscommon and places like that. So that was all in train. There was actually a big congested districts board resettlement programme a rolling out. And of course, that a, the, the Treasury does what departments of finance do everywhere in these things. They, they, put, they, they, they just put down the, the shutters and all those because they realise actually the money is going to have to go to uh, equipping soldiers, building warships or whatever.